me to are you ready no she will just she'll be ready when, when, when. <laughs> okay ready. three two one go hey now i can't see it i'm beautiful Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lau. If you're new here, thank you for um, joining my channel. If this is uh, your second time, third time joining this channel, thank you for coming back. Um, so come learn, go with me. Today, I have a special guest with me on this channel. Um, I invited my friend, Kapi, um, just to pick his mind on just a few things that I've been thinking about uh, the past few days. So I'll let him introduce himself first. Hi, my name is Fabi. Um, I'm happy to be here. Big fraction of podcasting. So <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, so if you don't already know Fabi, which you should, <laughs> um, check out his podcast. Um, it's called Pain Free. Um, yeah, and he's got a few episodes. I think I'll leave a link to his podcast in the show notes. So yeah, um, something I've been thinking about lately is um, is this narrative in our generation where people let's, let's just say I'll speak for ladies because okay. I'm a lady myself, right? Yeah. Um, Grace and I, my friend Grace, were talking about something yesterday where this girl um, she was mad at this guy. We saw a video on TikTok. Okay. So this girl was mad at this guy because. Uh, she he invited her on a date and she showed up with 18 friends so on that date um, he let them order you know they, they they had their food and everything and then after that um, he paid for himself and the girl he invited but like the thing the whole thing went viral I think last year but I kind of saw it like um, just a few days ago and she was mad right and people were just talking about like oh she's so entitled like you know people are talking about like um if it was me i wouldn't even have paid i would have disappeared and everything like that but for me it really just spoke to how it's so easy to get entitled to somebody else's resources somebody else's time and sometimes um i feel it's okay to expect certain things from people yeah but then there's a point that it's not healthy yeah. and I feel like that's entitled so I just want you to just give your thoughts on like how does this where, where what bridges the line between like this is just an expectation and this is just plain entitlement like how do you um, bridge that gap like what what draws the line that's a great question um I think personally, um, I think every, everything kind of works in a system. Mm -hmm. I think a relationship has to work on a certain system. Um, your personal life has to be anchored by a certain system and routine. The problem of entitlement comes in when you try to pick different systems, different things that you like in a different system and just jumble it up into one place. So for example, that same um, um, incident, mm -hmm. obviously we know how social media is nowadays. It's not a surprise to see another couple do that. Yeah. And another, uh, the boyfriend, so to say, is able to pay for that. Yeah. But you don't know their lifestyle. You don't know what system they have in place to be able to live that kind of lifestyle. You just see a couple, they, they they are on a vacation, you know, vacation as we now call it. Mm -hmm. So you just pick and choose that aspect of that relationship yeah. without the systems that um, support that couple to live such a lifestyle, you just that kind of lifestyle. So I think it, uh, expectations and um, entitlement mm -hmm. come in when we are just, you know, picking and choosing things that are really good on the on, on the eye on social media without realizing that you have to build up to that kind of uh, lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. So would you say that um, entitlement is misplaced expectations? Um, 
not inside. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in a family, you always expect your father to do certain things yeah. because he has proven over and over that he is able to provide for. Mm -hmm. And there are moments where things may not be okay in a family, mm -hmm. but you don't throw a tantrum because you have a history of your parents fulfilling your expectations. But in a in a different situation, yeah. you have to have a track record of why you have those expectations from your father. If you don't have a track record of why, uh, suppose uh, on a date, there are some people who always go half an hour on yeah. on lunch or whatever. That's the system they've built. Mm -hmm. And there's there are couples that the man always feels like he has to pay for everything. Yeah. That's the system they've built. Mm -hmm. So if you were in a system where you go half and half. And then finally you're dating someone who wants to pay for everything you will have a situation a misunderstanding yeah. because one feels like they're not part of the relationship you know what i'm saying yeah. so you should have expectations based on the track record that you've established mm -hmm. and understanding that this person can meet these expectations because they have met them before you just don't expect something without a track record uh, a proven track record and the person's capability that's how it feels so um, I think another narrative that we've heard is it's being where people want to be celebrated for being like stepping into the roles that they're actually supposed to be stepping into. For example, right? Um, I live alone and I pay my rent. Yeah. That's a responsibility that I have right. over myself. I have to pay my rent, but there's the moment I have somebody that I'm seeing or somebody that I'm dating, right? Suddenly that responsibility becomes an expectation for me to receive help from the person that I'm with. And the narrative of like, I'm an independent woman, it, it borders a lot on like responsibilities that I already have for myself, like taking care of me, where adults may have bills to pay, right? And um, uh, it goes uh, the same for men as well, right? right? Like treating people with respect, for example, is like if if a man goes out of his way maybe to make people comfortable, to lead people, or to show up in how men are expected to do, at least according to biblical standards, right? right. Protecting, providing. Are providing leadership and stuff like that right. those men expect like some sort of high esteem which i feel like why are you entitled to celebration for doing things that you're meant to be doing right. yeah so like what do you think about just that whole scenario okay um let me tackle the, the aspect of the independent woman mm -hmm. and yeah, that whole point. Um, I think everyone has a belief system yeah. and core values that they were raised on. Mm -hmm. And I think for every person out there, um, an independent woman or not, or a bachelor or not, any person, you have to understand um, the origin of the beliefs that you are taking upon mm -hmm. yourselves and incorporating in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. For a Christian who solely believes and, and lives by the principles of the Bible, how does being a, an independent woman look like based on, on the principles of the Bible? Okay. The problem we have right now is that the world is so, is so global yeah. and the influences that we have originate from different uh, ideologies, lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it looks good on camera, it, it sounds good. Mm. Um, nowadays, you can't just have a birthday party, you gotta have, you gotta have like a photo shoot, you gotta yeah. do the whole dinner thing. Mm. But you have to understand where did that originate from? Yeah. And is it something that you can incorporate in your own life? Mm. We have individuals that have incorporated so many ideologies and beliefs in, in their whole systems that it's difficult to really know where they stand and it's difficult for us to like the same um the issue of being an independent woman mm -hmm. apart from paying bills like what else 
is there as far as being an independent woman? What else is there uh, as far as maybe being like uh, in a relationship where you're supposed to also start paying bills for your girlfriend? Like, yeah. where, where does that originate from? And is it something you can incorporate in your own life? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, what I'm hearing is entitlement really borders on, let's say, comparison. There is a little bit of comparison, but there's also a little bit of an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you expect to pay your own bills, mm -hmm. it's just irresponsible. I don't think there's ever been a day my father paid the bills in the house and then started clapping or celebrating that he paid yeah. for everything. He just knows he's supposed to as, as a family man, mm -hmm. right? In the same way, in, I think men also just have the ability to provide yeah. in a certain way and they feel fulfilled by doing that, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it also borders on your identity or the identity you created yourself or the identity you find in whatever core values that mm -hmm. you live by. So if you know who you are, then you know what you have to do to maintain a character that is implanted in you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. I think at the core is as a Christian your identity in Christ is it aligning with the lifestyle or the uh, expectations and the entitlement that you're placing on mm. people around you yeah yeah well I don't think entitlement is, in itself is a bad thing no it's I don't think it's, it's not I really don't because um if 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 I be, like the example you've given, right? Like in a home, mm -hmm. um, we are we belong to a home, right? Right. If there's food, I'm I'm gonna go in and eat exactly. because I'm entitled to a meal. Mm -hmm. Even if my my father provides that, mm -hmm. I'm entitled to the meal by the fact that I belong in that household, right? right. But I think what really causes the the split for me is when gratitude is taken out of the picture, right. right? Like for everything that I'm entitled to and everything that I'm receiving for free, right. somebody else has paid the price for it. Exactly. The, the way you've, 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 you've talked about your dad paying the bills, we live in our parents' homes for free because they pay the bills, right? right? We, we, we have free air we breathe every day because God created that right. everything we have I don't think there's ever anything for free and I think that's like such um, I think that's why we really get robbed mm -hmm. you know because what we are getting for free which we're supposed to be grateful for mm -hmm. is now something that we are receiving and expecting more without appreciating what we already have okay. and um, recognizing value of those simple acts. If I go out on a date with my man, he pays for me. I'm grateful that he's done that. But that doesn't mean that the day he doesn't do it, it makes him less of a person. If 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 I pay my bills, thank God I worked for for that money. I got that money. I paid for my bills. I should be proud of that. Right. You know what I mean? But that then take away from my identity doesn't take away from uh it, it then mean that gratitude should gratitude should be out of the the, the things that i receive for free mm -hmm. and i think really like if we take gratitude out of the, uh, out of the picture expectations become entitled. i feel like the things that we expect to happen the moment we stop being grateful for them yeah. i feel that's when it becomes entitled and like the unhealthy kind of thing. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. And uh, I think that when you say expectations are not, or expectations and entitlement mm -hmm. are not all bad, I do agree. Yeah. I think they become toxic when they are misplaced. Mm -hmm. um, the, the same example I have to give of a father of God because when you expect something from you're supposed to expect something from your father. Yeah. Because they have assumed that responsibility already. You're supposed to expect something from, from God. Because
because he's he has a responsibility as a father mm-hmm. towards you. And if you take what you expect from God and put it on a man, yeah, then you have misplaced expectation mm-hmm. and entitlement because that the capabilities of these two entities are so far apart. Mm-hmm. So when you expect someone to do what God is supposed to do for you, mm-hmm. you've misplaced your yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so even in, in the aspect of relationships or friendships um, there are certain friends who feel like if they are going through the worst then everybody has to come like mm. and be there for them or nurse them or baby them in a certain way and if you don't do that somehow you're not a good friend mm. but you have to understand why are they like that why do they expect you to such like to, to throw everything away that you're doing mm. to by, by their bedside so it's, it's, it's sort of a misplaced expectation because we live in a really busy world unfortunately yeah. so whatever time your friends can have to come see you or you know we have to appreciate like you need to talk of gratitude mm. but then if you expect everyone to be around you 24 7 that's an expectation you're supposed to have on God because he's the only one who can be with you 24 7 so you become frustrated with everyone around you because they cannot wait for you 24 7 so you see how we, we misplace these expectations and yeah. entitlement so that's when it becomes a bit toxic mm. what i'm hearing is i need to be careful how i place my expectations right and i need to be careful um which system requires uh this thing and that thing right 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 like um what i expect from my female friends i i, I have to be careful not to expect that from my male exactly. friends exactly and what i'm getting from my relationship i should not expect it from somebody else right right what my father can do for me i should not expect somebody else to do that for me exactly So I was reading a scripture in Luke, in the book of Luke, should be between 15 and 18, somewhere there. Um, I came across this portion of scripture where Jesus was talking about service in general and how we want to conduct ourselves in service and all that. So um, he gave an illustration of a master, right, who leaves and comes back from wherever he went, right? Um, very paraphrased and he comes back and he finds his servant at home like he will not come and expect the servant to do whatever he's doing first and then come attend to him like when the servant sees his master mm-hmm. come back from uh, where wherever he went he will attend to him first the master's expectation of him is to serve him first and then do everything else right I thought about this a lot where like I said earlier when we were talking about entitlement and how people expect to be celebrated for like things that they are supposed to be doing right. and I feel that really comes from having um, having a need for approval mm-hmm. for things that we do um, if, if you read further in the scripture it talks about how we should consider it a privilege to serve right and like us um being praised for service because if we see a problem right, right. and i think this is a, this is the case now that i'm in a space where i can i'm working um i'm in a space where i've served in certain spaces mm-hmm. there are times when i've done stuff and at the end of the day, I'm just like, okay, can they just tell me that? Ah, but the way you move the chair today, <laughs> you know, like yeah. because I'm, I've seen the problem, the chair needs to be moved. That's a fact. Like, right. it's 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 as a matter of fact that I need that. And I feel most of the times because of that, um, people's experiences of service, especially like in the church and in the corporate space, you want approval to such an extent that if it does not come it's very depressing and I think approval is something that we crave for Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad thing it's something that we crave for in relationships
validation we want to be acknowledged mm -hmm. but then where do we then draw the line between like this is just what i need to do mm -hmm. and not something that i need to do to survive right. because in our generation there's a lot of talk of, of mental health there's a lot of talk about you know we need people need to feel seen mm -hmm. and that's not a bad thing but like there comes a point where it's just not healthy mm -hmm. you know like how do i then get to a place where even if that approval doesn't come mm -hmm. i can still move forward knowing that this is what i had to do right um i think you did mention oh i think i, I did mention something about uh, beliefs and um, core values and identity mm -hmm. so the the world operates on a totally different system mm -hmm. and as a christian most of you are supposed to work on a totally different system um if, if we contrast service in in both the christian system and mm -hmm. and, and the world system yeah. you'll see the differences everything in the world is a corrupt version of of the godly way mm -hmm. so in, in a godly christian way the highest honor is to serve mm -hmm. so god gives this example by coming mm -hmm. in the form of a man so he reduces himself to come and save us Jesus reduced himself to washing the feet of his disciples because there was a greater service, mm. right? In our world, it's more honorable to be the boss, yeah. to be the CEO, mm. to be the boss lady, to be self-made, mm. which is different from the Christian way, mm. right? It, it, as a Christian, your service is is maybe worship to God or something you give mm. back. In in the world, it's more of it works on a reward basis. basis. Mm. So if I do this job month and I need you guys need to pay me more money. If you don't pay me more money, we have a, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we kind of post pictures. Yeah. You expect some form of likes yeah. a reward for, for taking a hundred selfies but you post one you, you 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 know so it, it works on now i do this so i can get this yeah in, in, in a christian way is i do this regardless of whether my boss sees my friend sees mm -hmm. but the only person i'm supposed to be worried about is god because he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him yeah. right and it's not always evident it's like you can't you can't do a good job and and feel like oh god so it's really yeah. difficult to, to get to that place mm -hmm. like i did this in with the right motives and i know god is watching me yeah. it's easier to like let me do this so that this person can see me and compliment me mm -hmm. right so you have to know which reward system you're working on mm -hmm. even with prayer god says you have to sort of withdraw so that no one sees what you're doing because you're not doing it as if you're doing it for man mm -hmm. but you're doing it for god so if you understand what system you are working on, mm -hmm. some of this, uh, uh, like seeking for approval will not be a problem because you know, this is not how I seek for approval. Mm -hmm. You will know how you seek your approval. You know, when you're working, you're not working it because of your boss mm -hmm. or your co-workers, you're not working so that you can get that quick reward because the world works on the really, you know, give and take basis so you give you expect nothing back mm -hmm. with, with the godly system is you can work for so long and yeah. so the world is instant it works on instant gratification mm -hmm. i think the christian world works more on a seed and then harvest mm -hmm. system so whatever you put in you have to be patient enough to wait mm -hmm. to get the reward it may be months it may be years but as long as, as long as you're doing it with the right motive, your harvest will come back. Mm -hmm. In the world, you post, even if you're in communication. Yeah. If I text you right now, I expect you to respond yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. But if I talk to God today, I might get the answer next week. Yeah. So it becomes a bit tricky. So you lean towards where 
where it's you know we tend to lean towards where it's more convenient for us faster for us mm -hmm. so that's how we are frustrated because you are living in a fast-paced world and you feel like you have to also be in a fast lane you also feel like you have to move like how everyone else is moving. Mm -hmm. but the right thing for you to do as a christian is go against the grain and really find your path and how you're supposed to move. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so but then since like it's a natural inclination for me for everyone to want to be seen right like everybody wants to be understood right in so, to some extent so how how then do i how then do i live going forward like with that understanding in mind that um, i don't live by this system i have a different word system but i can't take away my need to be seen so like how do i then navigate through that mm. I feel like we can't take our need to be seen, but we can change um, the target or the person who sees us. Like, we can change the focus of who sees us. Because approval, um, being appreciated, feeling special, are all feelings that we have inherited. And I think it attributes to the spirit God has. God enjoys our worship, God enjoys our praise, and since we also have His Spirit in us, there's a part of us that is like Him, so we also enjoy uh, being appreciated, we also enjoy being praised, we also enjoy those benefits of receiving something that lifts your spirit. But if we start, um, again, um, expecting them from the wrong places, in, in circumstances that are convenient for us, then that's what we be real. Right. Oh, that's what I think about. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I hope you guys um, have enjoyed this conversation. I'm so grateful for um, having you right now and giving me the opportunity to pick your brain. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, don't forget to like this video, share, subscribe with a friend that you feel might need to hear this. And don't forget to check out uh, Puppy's podcast. It's called Pain Free. We're on episode six now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave the link in the show notes and be sure to join us next time. Now I can't see and it's beautiful.